<laughs> Every now and then, I get a gadget that crosses my desk and it, it really just makes me say, wow. The folks at iFi Audio sent over the XDSD Griffin portable DAC amp for me to test drive, share some thoughts, and my thoughts are, wow. I've played with a little iFi gear in the past, but never really long enough to feel like I could properly review it. I I've always had a soft spot in my heart for the hip DAC too. Because we're in a golden age of portable audio right now, little Bluetooth options, those flask style DACs won't break the bank, but deliver audio quality that we used to need much more expensive gear to produce. So I'm just spitballing here, like, okay, what if we took some of that portable magic and we beefed up the case a little to include a ton more IO and built a no compromises Swiss army knife crossover audio solution? It's this, <laughs> you, you would get this thing here. The Griffin is what I was just describing. This thing is nuts. I've got to describe a little philosophy in these videos. I've been recommending portable DAC amps for folks who might not consider themselves audiophiles because they're a noticeable improvement on most laptop or PC headphone jacks. I think they're really handy. You don't have to pay a lot. They're good ambassador products to get people up to speed with higher quality audio. The Griffin is a bigger step into audiophile. <laughs> the ease of use holds true. You can plug it in or connect it over Bluetooth, then you pop on some headphones, you turn this little dial and sound comes out. It could be just that, but there's so much more to this box. The front face has our, our power button volume dial. You press it in to turn it on and you get really nice articulated clicks for volume adjustments. A little button here to toggle X space and X base, and then you long press it for all of your settings and options. Then there's also a mode selector so you can cycle through analog, digital, and wireless connections. On the front face, we have a balanced 4.4 millimeter connector and a 3.5 millimeter S balanced connector. That's iFi's label for an amp configuration that tries to bring the benefits of a balanced connector to a single end headphone. Now, turning this around, the rear panel is where things get spicy. Single ended and balanced ports, SP diff, a USB C that can act as a data only port or a data and power port. And then there's a separate USB C just for power, depending on how you want to set this up. The absolute crazy thing about these rear ports, they're inputs and outputs. You can route your music to another component, like say you had a specific amp that you really like to use. Kind of blowing my mind how well this works. The Griffin can be a total one-stop shop, DAC and amp, or you can interact with the DAC or the amp separately to play nice with gear you already own. I've never used anything quite this flexible before. And next to the USB ports, there's a three-way switch to toggle additional presence or bass or both. Internally, the Griffin is sporting a Burr Brown DAC and is rated for some pretty extreme playback. I'm just gonna put the numbers, the list on the screen. This is gonna float here for just a bit so you can just read through what's going on on this piece of hardware here. Also inside, one of the newest Qualcomm Bluetooth chips supporting not only Aptex Adaptive, but also LDAC up to 96 kilohertz. iFi is trying to future-proof this with a separate Bluetooth engine that can be updated, uh, again, separately from the rest of the unit so that it might be able to support future Bluetooth codecs. It could be kind of interesting to see if maybe someday, if there's enough interest in this, that maybe we could get LHDC on this box too. Griffin is packing a 3600 milliamp hour battery rated for up to 10 hours of playback. All of those ratings are heavily dependent on what you connect it to and what you're powering it with. I got just under seven hours on my very first listen using my Odyssey Euclids and connecting over Bluetooth with LDAC. Runtime estimates won't really matter as much if you're using it as more of a cabled solution. The kind of cool thing about having a battery in a solution like this, it can draw more power from the host device or it can kind of run on its own. And then the battery is responsible for powering the internals, which should also minimize any issues with dirty power, depending on what you have it connected to. The numbers bear this out. I'm in margin of error territory where I'm absolutely exceeding the recording capabilities of my little USB audio interface, and I can't really demonstrate any better just how low noise and low distortion this thing really is. Back to the battery, if you charge it while it's off, it should be able to complete a full charge, zero to full, in about three hours. 
But iFi also warns that charging while playing, it could take six hours or more to fully charge in operation. And all that talking just gets us through an overview, not even a deep granular dive into the spec sheet, just kind of kind of the, the, the numbers on the back of the box. <laughs> this thing's brilliant. Getting into playback immediately. I think a lot of folks notice the amp first when they upgrade to more audiophile gear, not just loud. We're not just talking about blowing out your ears. It's fuller, it's richer playback with lower noise and lower distortion. Those claims are absolutely spot on. I was kind of surprised that this wasn't just a mega amp play. Over the 3.5 millimeter connector, I've played with some other portable solutions that can outmuscle the Griffin. But I don't think iFi is running that kind of race with this product. There's still plenty of room here, and my collection of headphones aren't that picky. Like, there's absolutely no issue driving my Bear Dynamic Pros or some good kind of entry or mid-range planar magnetics. And moving to the balance connector puts out even more power if you need it to drive some more demanding headphones. You, you kind of get to a tier where some of those enthusiasts can. It could be fun taking an exotic headphone and turning it into a more portable audio solution. But outside some of the novelty of that idea, you probably won't end up with a better listening experience. Easily power nearly anything you would want to take with you on the go, and then you can plug it into an even more powerful amp for some of those thirstier headphones that benefit from listening in a more controlled environment. For the actual playback, I kind of vibe with the iFi comments on making audio too flat or too accurate accurate. If your headphones are a little more analytical, that might not be as much fun if you just stick with straight playback and bit perfect filtering. I have spent a lot of time pairing these with the Odyssey Euclid and just that little nudge of space and filling out the lows. It was just a little tastier. It was a little more fun without feeling like I was really stomping on some kind of EQ preset. Those characteristics influenced by the DAC. The Griffin is fun dynamic. It's punchy, and, and I was kind of concerned by the high end, maybe looking a little overrepresented, but it's just so well behaved. So you pair it with some articulate or some punchy headphones, and the combo just kind of lights me up. It's a wonderful representation of the music I like, and there's just so much room here. It feels like there's so much space for vocals to really shine, to dig up some heavier lows, put some meat on that bass, and I can hear this sparkle. It's out at the high end without wearing me out. It's where I'm most easily fatigued, and I really don't like it when my pop tracks start veering shrill. <laughs> You'll pardon, because I kind of go off on these music listening tangents, and, and it's just so silly. I'm demoing this hardware. This is a premium product, and I'm connecting other premium products to it. I go through my normal playlist. I've got that linked. It's on Kobuz. And then I just say, hey, you know what? I haven't jammed some Vampire Weekend in a while, and I get to Horchata, and there are all those playful little xylophone and bass pulses, and they're just so clear and clearly separated from each other and from the vocals, and it just helps carry the whimsy of that track. It's so cute. And I'm listening to this fun little song on brilliant hardware, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm just kind of grinning like a total dope, and I loved it. Now, no product can ever be completely unicorn perfect, and there's one tiny omission here too. This is far from a deal breaker, and given the intended audience of this product, but for how flexible this thing is as an audio routing gadget, there is no mic or input for things like calls, phone calls, or video calls. Now I know, I know that's sacrilege to audiophiles, and I bet a number of audiophiles will be more interested in buying one of these for not having those extra connectors and wiring and routing for audio input. But when you connect to a phone or a computer, I do think it's a nice consideration to also handle a microphone. And probably not for holding this up to your face, but if there could have been any support for a headset mic, 
that would have been nice. Even a pair of cans like my UltraZone come with a cable that has an inline headset microphone. The Griffin is powerful and it's flexible and it's decently portable, but it's just not that kind of audio gadget. So the Griffin, this gets a monstrously positive recommendation from me, but I have to stress again that this is an elevated audio product. iFi is charging $5.99 and it's absolutely worth every penny. This little box is special, but to get $600 out of it, you need a little education on audio gear and your own personal tastes. I'm really comfortable these days recommending good options up to around $200 for beginners. I feel you'll grow into what those little portable solutions can really do. The Griffin is a tier above that. It might take a novice a little longer to max out what they can do with it. All the settings, all the options, all the connections, but getting to play with one for an extended test drive, it really has no equal. It fits in so many places. It plays nice with portable gear and proper desktop listening gear. The Griffin made me say, wow. And if you love your ears, I hope someday you'll be able to take one for a spin. Oh, I will, of course, leave some links down below for more information on the iFi Griffin, where you can shop one of these bad boys online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely rocking my socks. If you're checking out links below, heading to my home site, somegadgetguy.com, shopping a little merch, or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadget guy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.